Where are we? Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams came out for a promo, and they were interrupted by uh, by Dragunov. And uh, I refuse to believe this last week because this is my favorite show and it can do no wrong. But this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Literally, Finn Balor pinned Carmelo Hayes in a tag match next week. And I thought, there ain't no way on God's green earth this is not leading to a three-way for the title. And it's not. It is Carmelo Hayes versus Ilya Dragunov. Which begs the question, why didn't you pin Trick Williams in that tag match, you numbskulls? So anyway, you already pinned Carmelo on the main roster, didn't you? You know, who cares? But right? I will That's... say that, like, I cannot wait for Carmelo and uh, and Dragunov because that match is going to rule. I think Dragunov's winning. He could, and I'd have him win because he's great. Then Ali met with Wesley. <laughs> this Wesley character, like, he's a baby face, but my God, he's so sensitive. Terrible friend, sensitive. Ali yeah. says, "You're really going to defend the title against Dom tonight, dude? We're already signed to have a match for the title at the at the Great American Bash." And Wes says, don't worry about it, I got it. And Ali says, listen, I, I want to face you. I don't want to face Dom. Well, now Wes is insulted. You don't think I can beat Dom? And Ali says, listen, Rhea's going to be there. They cheat all the time. Wes goes, listen, I'll be at the bash. And Ali says, no, actually, I'll be at the bash. We'll see if you make it. I like this segment. We had Dragon Lee and Nathan Frazier versus Los Lotharios. With the exception of two Battle Royal appearances, which you have all forgotten about because they were just nothing happened in matches, this was the first time that Los Lotharios have wrestled since January, okay? Now listen to me, because I know some of you don't like to listen. You don't like to hear truth. Watch this match. And watch. You've never seen a match that had such a dead crowd for like the first three minutes and then had the crowd going absolutely bonkers at the end. And do not tell me that it's crowd sweetening because they do the long shot and literally these fans are on their feet jumping up and down and clapping and screaming for this match that like nobody cared about at the beginning. This Nathan Frazier is unbelievable. And Dragon Lee's doing fine. Los Lotharios did a good job. But my God, they got this. They just, these these fans were going haywire for this match. And finally, Dragon Lee has a new finish. It's the Destino. Hits Angel with the Destino, pinned him. And then Umberto flipped out. He's sick of losing, even though this is our first match since January. And he storms off. So that was that. Ridiculous. They show up in the catbird seat. They look out at all the other tag teams. They decide to plot and scheme. And then just immediately he walks out on his partner, which wouldn't be the only time that happened. Then we had Baron Corbin. So last week, you know, Baron Corbin's do this whole thing. He's burning all of his gimmicks and everything like that. And then I'm like, good, get rid of all this stupid stuff. Just be Baron Corbin. So he gets in a car, he starts driving, and he gets in the woods, and he runs into a hooded guy, and there's like fire. I'm like, oh, God, is this voodoo? Is this stupid voodoo stuff again? Like, you just got rid of the gimmicks, brah. So he gets out of the car. He goes, what's going on? And he grabs the guy, and he spins him around, and the guy takes the hood off. It's Baron Corbin. <laughs> so, like, the story is that he's just going to be himself from now on. But what happened was <laughs> Baron Corbin got in a car. He drove to the woods. He got out of the car and saw a hooded man doing a ritual. He spun the man around. And it was him. He ran into himself in the woods. And then they did the Spider-Man point at each other. They didn't do that, but it would have been funnier. It was funny, but it was ridiculous. So anyway, uh, Booker is giving Roxanne advice about Blair Davenport. It's caught on, on uh, that uh, NXT GTV or whatever. He is mad about that. Then we had uh, Kiana James and Gigi Dolan. Man, Kiana's been nothing since this storyline ended with her and the Virgin. It's just she's out there doing matches. This was not very good. Uh, they had, they had, I swear to God, the worst 
the absolute worst tug of war over a purse in the history of professional wrestling. The ref grabbed it. Kiana hit her move on the bag. One. No. I never would have ever thought that I would have missed the artistic stylings of Missy Hyatt and Dark Journey. But uh, here we go. Had a couple of segments here. They're going to do uh, Eddie Thorpe or Omensa later. Then we had the debut of Bronco Nima and Lucian Price. They faced Axiom and Scripts. Okay. This was just so stupid. First off, they did a backstage deal last week where Axiom and Scripps, you know, were sitting there in the same room with them, and Scripps challenges them essentially to a debut match. And Axiom's like, you know, we're not a team. There's stuff I want to do here on my own. But Scripps makes the match anyway. So they come out here for the match. And uh, like I said, these guys, they got a lot of personality. They got a great look. They're big. The question was, can they work? Well... We now know without a shadow of a doubt that Bronco Nima is nowhere near ready for television. He doesn't even look like he wants to take bumps. Like, he is absolutely 100% super green and not ready. Lucian didn't even get into the ring until like the last 30 seconds. But Lucian, for those 30 seconds, did look great. Just, I mean, he's got speed. He's just running these dudes over. He looked like he had a ton of potential. And then, you know, before we even got to that point, Scripps just jumped Axiom from behind and laid him out. Well. (laughs) What? Now we know who he was referring to when he was talking about his people. He wasn't talking about his parents, wasn't talking about his his family or any of that stuff. Talking about his people that he came up with. So as Booker T would say, I guess, in this situation, yeah. We had the Tony D homecoming, and uh, to cut to the chase, we still have absolutely no idea what charges were leveled against Tony D. It has never been explained what he was accused of and why he was in jail for so long, but now he is out. Gallus is very upset about it. They are doing a tag title match. I think it is uh, next week. The homecoming is like, you know, a bunch of Tony's family, and then Gallus gets really, really angry, and so they start heading down to the ring to beat up Stax and Tony D., But everybody at the party pulls crowbars out of their outfits because they're all gangsters. And then, you know, they beat up Gallus and uh, put Mark through a table. This is one of those things that's like, it's like, it's, it's just, you know, it's harmless, just wacky, whatever. It doesn't bother me. It's like... I have no problem with stuff like this. It is ridiculous, though, when you think about the entirety of everything, because like every NXT skit, as Tony D'Angelo is coming out of prison, we have the multiple camera shot of him getting his stuff back, putting his white suit back on, and then we have the multiple camera angles and the cool music and the uh, of, of, of he and Stax embracing afterwards, and, and then we got to the other artistic portion of their night. All right, I got to keep moving here. We had a, a schism, Carmelo and Elia segment, and yes, the creeds are dressed as cult members, and uh, and you can't miss it once you once you see it. It's like it's all you can look at because I think it's uh, Julius. You just see his eyes. He's going <laughs> behind the mask the whole time. Thea Hale, Electra Lopez. Thankfully, they uh, this was like a minute. Thea won, and then you know they did an angle which is like a pro wrestling angle. It's been done before, but when you really think about it, it's so stupid. So Thea wants a rematch. And Tiffany comes out and offers her a rematch at Great American Bash for the title. So Thea then says, oh, by the way, the ball is not in Thea's court, okay? Thea goes, well, I'm going to add something to the match. It's a submission match. And so Tiffany's like, I ain't doing a submission match. You kidding me? Not happening. So Thea attacks her, puts her in a Kimura. And once she's in the Kimura... Tiffany goes, okay, fine. It's a submission match. (laughs) So let me get this straight. You didn't want a submission match, but then you got put in a submission that hurt so bad that you were ready to quit, and that's when you agreed to a submission match. This is ten shades of preposterous. But Doesn't the United Nations have rules against things like this in war? She said it twice. She was not going to be involved in a match like that. Where was security? Eddie Thorpe and Oro Mensa, I don't have enough time in two Observer Lives to talk about this, so I'm just going to wait until uh, until the Brian and Vinny show tomorrow night. But uh, uh, what's his name? Dijak interfered and uh, led to Thorpe losing. They're going to have a match. We had acting. 
with Dana Brooke and Kaylani Jordan and then Cora oh, Jade Kaylani. Poor in Kaylani. three Observer Lives. I don't have time to recap this. <laughs> this also needs my full attention tomorrow. Uh, but by the way, this is leading to Dana Brooke and Cora Jade in a kendo stick match next week. Right. Dana's saying she, but she can do the things that the other girls can't do. They're all gymnasts. They can all do the same things. Then we had a Blair and Roxanne face-to-face. Which was not a face to face. They were in different rooms, maybe different cities, perhaps side even different side. planets. But anyway, this was great because of Blair Davenport. Man, this woman could cut a promo. She was so great in this segment, just burying Roxanne. She goes, This division is for women, not little girls. And, like, everything that Roxanne says, she just... I mean, she was great. Oh, and God. finally, Roxanne just, she just storms off. She's all angry. I was like, man, Blair was I, great. We disagree on Roxanne in crisis. I don't like how this has gone. And then we had Wesley and Dom for the North American title. And, uh, you know, the match the match was actually not very good. And I know everybody wants to blame Dom. But, I mean, there was some weird stuff with Wesley in this match as well. So I don't know whose problem this was. But it was not great. And then Finn Balor and Damian Priest show up, and the place just goes insane because there's main roster guys there. And then Priest tries to hit him with Wes with the belt. Wes hits him with the cardiac kick. Rhea clonks Wes with the title. Dom crawls over and gets the pin. It was like there were 30,000 people in this building when Dom got that pin. They were so angry. They were so angry. And so now he is a North American champion. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.